and also to those who are watching online. Today is Palm Sunday, a day for celebration. The King has arrived. Let us prepare our hearts for worship this Sunday, this Palm Sunday morning. When we enter into His presence, let our silent meditation express our worship, hopes, confession, and thankfulness. Be still now for a moment of silent prayer. Be still. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalms chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. A time for adoration. Thank you. Morning, church. I hope you all have a very pleasant morning. We are very grateful today for being able to come here in worshiping God. So let us please all rise on our feet. If, of course, if you're comfortable. As we begin, we want to consecrate and surrender ourselves to God. But at the same time, let us proclaim the glory and majesty of our God grateful in adorations for this beautiful world he created. Praise him. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea Revealing your majesty From the colors of fall To the fragrance of spring Every creature is unique In the song that it sings All that's claiming Indescribable Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are an amazing God. Oh, powerful, untamable, all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing, God. Who has told every lightning bolt where it should go? Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow? the sun and give source to its light, yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night, none can fathom, indescribable, uncontainable. 
above. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are the amazing God. Oh, powerful. Oh, powerful, untamable. Oh, strive we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are the amazing God. Indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are the amazing God. We fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are the amazing God. Indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name, you are the amazing Incomparable, unchangeable, you see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are the amazing God. You are the amazing God. Amazing love. Amazing love that welcomes me. The kindness of mercy that bought with love wholeheartedly. My soul undeserving God, you're so good. Oh God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good. I am here, I am hope, I am 
remember in the words and deed that Jesus is the satisfaction of our souls any of our ups and downs of our life will often leave us feeling shattered but God understands that he loves us nonetheless and always be working to fix us but by his amazing grace we will become the vessel of his holiness and let us truly witness the genuine love in this world and may we find the assurance of this salvation in the written word of our God. Let us remind us again, it is by grace through faith in Christ Jesus, not from ourselves. This is the gift of God. All these pieces. Pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered and and empty handed but not forsaken. I've been set free, I've been set free.
To you, Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Our souls praise you, O God, for you are our help and salvation. Come, all who hear, now to, the, to his temple, draw near. Let us join together in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, above all things, so wondrously reigning. Sheltering us under your wings, and so greatly sustaining. Praise to you, the Lord, who will prosper our work and defend us. Surely, your goodness and mercy shall daily be present with us all. Let us ponder anew what the Almighty can do, because Jesus is the one and only mediator between God and us. Praise to the Lord, Oh, let us, oh, let all that is in us adore him. All that has life and breath 
come now with praises before him. Let the Amen sound from us, his people again, gladly forever adoring him. We pray you bless this day the proclamation of the word by local preacher Thomas Ling. And may your Holy Spirit help us in renewing our passion for God. Thank you for graciously ordering all that is needful into our lives so that our joy may be full. We pray all these things in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Please be seated. Responsive reading today is from Psalms 1 to 8, 1 to 6. We will say verses 6 together. Verse 1. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be blessed, and it shall be well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Together, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Shall we rise to say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Scripture reading today will be from 2 Timothy Chapter 1, verse 3 to 14, and Adam Singh will read that for us. Thank you, Adam. All right, once again, uh, today's reading is taken from uh, 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 3 to 14. Uh, God the deposit entrusted to you. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying of, uh, on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. And now which has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is to, able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me, in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, God the good deposit entrusted to you. This is the word of the Lord. May God bless us who read and obey his word. Thank you, brother. 
Today is a Palm Sunday. So favorite words is, Hosanna, Hosanna, the king is coming. It is because the king came 2,000 years ago. He still rise from the dead after the uh, crucifixion, uh, crucifixion on the cross. Therefore, the church was established. So according to our calendar, it is also the Laity Sunday. So it's my privilege to be here to share with you about our lay ministry for 2024 CMCA, all the churches here. As we know, we come to this uh, Palm Sunday and we are facing this Holy Week ahead of us. Have we been pondering over the past four weeks, four or five weeks in this uh, lamb season? What have you done differently? What are you expecting this year? When you compare with 2023, what have you learned? Is that just as usual, as normal? Kids looking, students looking forward for holidays? What does that really mean when we come to Palm Sunday again, constantly remind us the great love of God given to us through his son, Jesus, on the cross. And from the cross, reason to the heaven. And his church is established here for us to continue on. So I bring greetings from all the brothers and sisters of the churches across Australia and the uh, CMCA and the pastors as well. Blessing to you all. To the brothers and sisters here is uh, Camberwell Methodist Church. God be with you and keep you and bless you. So we, as we continue to ponder on this second uh, Timothy first chapter one, verse three to fourteen. I select this text is because we look into a church, we'll see our elderly seniors. Uh, members, young adult, adults, and then MYF, and then children. It is a family. We call it this a uh, Camberwell family, Camberwell and Methodist Church family. We are a family. When we look at this, Paul being the apostle, being the mentor, being the counselor, being the great evangelist to spread the gospel, when he wrote this, he's in a prison in the second time. It's about 65 to 67 AD. Why, why he was there? He was there awaiting the verdict from Nero. Ultimately, he's the one, he, you know, he was executed by Nero. So he's the first one that we know is literally the head got chopped off. Then we look at this young Timothy. We have so many young people here. We are like little Timothy. Your parents brought you to church. You accepted Christ. You are a member of this church. You are a participant of this church. You are in a youth group or other groups. But you know that God gave you the special gift, gift from the Spirit for you, that you are exiled in certain way, in certain items, in certain things you can do very well. Just like Paul, when he first missionary probably to find this young church leader, Timothy. And Timothy joined him for two other journeys. You are here, gone through. When you are in primary school, kinder, primary school, secondary school, and then you go to college, all the while your parents have brought you here. What have you learned? Did you learn things differently every year? Because you're supposed to grow up. Spiritual maturity, you know, you're a better person, a better in sharing uh, ministry, I mean, the gospel with others, share your love with others. Is that true? And we sit down here today for this Palm Sunday. We ask ourselves, how much have we done? What else I can do? We know that Paul's 
Saint Timothy to Ephes to the church at Ephesus to counter the false teaching and taking care of the church here. Just like today, the church, we had to bring you the truth from our God to you. Because there are so many things. You flip your mobile phone, you got everything in your hand. You keep on wondering what is going on. Is that what I heard from the church are true or not? You become wonder, confused. Brothers and sisters, we need to know, we need to know where this gospel is from. And we know what is the truth that we should believe in. Not what we just simply he say, he say, they say. But in your heart, deep on the bottom of your heart, what did you believe? You believe the God that your parents believe? You believe the God that preached at the churches, Methodist churches as well? What do you think? You need to know, to discern what is false teachings, what is untruthful things. So we know, in order to do this, we need to continue on to, we need to continue on to what? Have a good, deep relationship with our God. Just that like Paul and Timothy. Paul called Timothy my true son in faith. When you say you are my true son or you are my true children, that means we are bloodly related, you know, come from the same parents as God. And here he said, my dear son, then we can see that how Paul described that relationship, the bond that they have together. Just like God chosen us to be his children, as long as we accept him, as long as we accept him as our father in heaven, as long as we believe in him. How to deepen this relationship? We need to pray to God to study his words. So we know that Paul mentioned all this to share his appreciation, thanksgiving to prayers for the young fellow worker and the infant church, and really looking forward to go out and meet them. You have been here how long? So many years already. Do you really consider this your home church? I mean, you call this church a family to you. What have you done to make it better if you know you are a member of this church? So it's, when we look at the verses, verse 5 and so forth, we know that Paul mentioned to Timothy, you must remember your Christian heritage. How you come to know this Christ. How you accept him. Who and how you receive Christ. Of course, you always say, oh, born in a Christian family, my family, you know, when I uh, infant, I went to church already and so forth and so forth, I grew up with the church. Yes. But tr did you truly believe? Or is that you, truly your parents bring you to you to church, church to attend a church? Or to truly to bring you to God so that God will call you and receive you will accept Christ as his personal savior? Then, did you bring others to God? You say, I go to church too lonely. Can't you bring along some friends with you? So that you have more companions in the church, more friends in the church? When we look back at our Christian heritage, our belief from your own family, from your own perspective, who is the one who truly brings you to know God? Who is the one? Have you appreciated and thanked them for that? I'm here to just try to, to try to fan you into the gift of God again, how to renew ourselves for the ministry of the church, renew our passion for God, 
for his service in your church where you are here in Zion. Yes, when you are doing the serving of the church or doing anything, you, a lot of time you feel disappointed or discouraged because nobody listened to me. In a church, you know that we all come in with different perspectives, different gifts, different talents, different opinions. And that's why it's so hard to make a good decision on particular items that you want to push for. Brothers and sisters, when we come to church, we need to know that it is a family as well, and we need to have love. Let's think of others first rather than ourselves first. Let's see, pray for the church the leaders, the LCEC members, or fellowship officers. Then what can we do so that we can enhance, enhance the ministry that we have, the fellowship that we have? You receive the blessed, the great uh, gifts of God. You are here for, on your baptism. You know our Methodist tradition, the MIC or the elders or DS will, you know, put a cross on your forehead and lay hands on you and pray for you. On the day you accept into the membership of the church, they pray again for you, put a hand on you. That is, we affirm of the laying of the hands to bring you the gifts of God to you as well. It is deep only inside you. In the bottom of your heart, you do know that, yes, now I got to receive this spirit. Because this spirit God given us is not spirit of fear. But it is for the pow of power, for works, of love, so that we can care, for self-discipline, so that we can control ourselves. So in every aspect of our lives, we need to be strong in our belief in God. We need to truly share love in caring. We need to discipline ourselves to have the discipline lifestyle. We need to reactivate our gifts. Rather than serving, you know, we are feeling so tired because in our serving, it becomes our routine ministry. It's just for the sake of doing it. There's no more challenges, no more meaning inside it. Brothers and sisters, this is the time as we move on to the Holy Week. Ponder upon God, you call me to serve in this area. I feel so helpless now. What can I do? Back to pray to God. Tell Him what is your situation, circumstances, what are your problems. Need to rekindle your personal relationship with God. Rekindle, reactivate the gifts. This is all done by through our prayers of reading of the scripture every day. So we need to set aside time for daily devotion, for prayers. The prayers can be for individuals, and for the church, it's a corporate prayer. And the fellowship, the corporate prayer as well. When the church calls upon you, every Thursday night or Wednesday night, your prayer time. When the time comes, please stop everything and stop praying. Because this is important. That the brothers and sisters, we need to pray together. Prophet Samuel said, I cannot stop praying for you because if I stop praying, it will not be pleasing to God. You go back and look at uh, the book of Samuel. It said very clearly, I have to pray for you. Here, Paul is saying, Pray and pray through in tears, pray for the church here. Indeed, in this defining time, in this challenging world, we just simply say the word is not enough. We need to really to deep down on our knees, humble ourselves in humility. We come to God to bring our needs, our problems, issues to God. Then listen. Listen to God respond to you and take the action from there. God will give you wisdom and knowledge in making decisions, a very important decision, or whatever it is. 
So this relationship with God is through our reading the scripture, meditation of the words, through prayers, and to our interaction, fellowship with each other in the church, or in a fellowship. That was enhancing our belief in God. And we know that our brothers and sisters in the church, they are helping me, they know, they pray for me as well, they care for me, they support me, they gave me directions for to make decisions. So, appearing for boldness to endure sufferings, that means once you pray and you get an answer, keep that word and face the challenges. Because when there is no way, God will open a little window for you when there is no doors. As long as you trust him, as long as you give him recognizing as your Lord and Savior, as your master. So do not be intimidated what people say, what others say, but what do you believe? In the First Timothy 4, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 12, say, let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example in speech, in love, in life, in faith and purity. Doesn't matter. People say, oh, you are just a kid. How do you know this? You just say, I'm God's children. God has chosen me as his child. But I need to really to expound our life, our belief through our words, the way we talk, the way we behave, our attitudes, our love, our faith in God. And we must have holy living so that people look at us, they will see that you are a true Christian by love, by the fragrance of being a Christian that you shine or share with others. Hold fast to your belief. Know who has believed and trusted and that he is able to sustain you till that day, meaning till the end of the day. So for us, we need to trust God. The day we believe God, the day we accept the Christ, the day we become His child, God's children, is the beginning of your faith journey. Throughout this journey, we need to know how to have a sanctified life. We know to have a holy living. We know to participate in the church service or any kind of ministry of church until the day we are called upon back to heaven with God. So it's a lifelong uh, ministry for us. So keep what you had heard from me, that is Paul said to Timothy, as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Jesus Christ, and then guard your good deposit and trust it to him with the help of the Holy Spirit in you. This, uh, what does this mean? This means that what I have taught you, the scripture, the gospel I have bring to you, they are of some uh, foundation. That is the truth, because it's all based on Jesus Christ. What you have believed, can you endure for the rest of your life? What the gospel that you have received, then are you sharing the gospel with others? What you have learned from public ministries, from Bible studies, uh, from the scholars, Bible scholars and all that, what kind of message you have, what kind of passion you have now to share your life with others. Serving is a lifelong process. Trials and tribulations mold you to maturity and shape you to be a distinct character. Meaning, you experience the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You experience the power, empowerment of the Holy Spirit to your daily walk with God. Why nowadays it's so hard 
to share the gospel with someone, some outsiders, those non-believers. We hear the gospel, the one who brought the message to you. But nowadays, most people, they don't use the ears to listen to the gospel. They use their eye to see that you live up the gospel in your life. How much the gospel has impacted you is what they are looking for. With that evidence, they will only accept Christ. Use the year to listen to what he is saying. So the world is changing. We need to use different ways to talk, I mean to share the gospel as well. As we rekindle ourselves, we need to re-examine ourselves. What areas, what are the things we need to consider? First, do you still believe the truth, the gospel that you accepted Christ when you baptized into his name? Do you still understand the scripture through Bible study, through reading, daily devotion, to medications, meditations, prayers? This is the very, very, very key foundation to our Christian living. That every day you need to set a time for prayers beside the church prayers group on a Wednesday or Thursday night. You need to pray for yourself, your family, your children, your church, and then the country, etc., etc., for the leaders of the church. The key thing is when you wake up the first thing before you jump out of bed, what did you do? Did you preach the gospel to yourself every day again? You have to. To thank God you are still alive, you're still able to get up. Then you pray for others to start your day by prayers, by submitting yourself to God through the Holy Spirit. He will guide you and lead you so that you can lead exceedingly well or to overcome all the obstacles, sufferings, or decision-making that you have. Holy characters, indeed. You know, as we know that there are so many things happening at other churches, other denominations, what are the characters now of the priests, or of the pastors, or of the church leaders? That's why I know some of you here, you say, that why I have to attend the same church awareness program, workshop? To know that how we can behave better, yes. To safeguard us, to hold trust to what we believe it, to truly to act as a good Christian, distinct with a Christian with distinct character. Brother and sister, times have changed. Now it's so different. Society has changed. There are so many things different. We need to spread the gospel different as well. It, we, we have to be integrated into a whole different way, several different ways that we can do. Where well, the best thing is of a holy living. That is a people can see. That is the best one. But of course, you need to prepare yourself. Also. We also need to be mission-minded. If you have not had a chance to go any short-term missions, I advise you or encourage you to do so. First time, I got the opportunity to go to uh, Nepal in, back in uh, February. And I went through from Kathmandu, takes eight hours of uh, traveling on the road. It's so hilly, a mountain, you know, everywhere. The high up and down, reach to the uh, churches and all that. You can see that the people there, if a member of the church receive power because of healing of God through the prayers or laying of hands by preachers or pastors, of the particular church, he will go back and share the gospel with the whole family, and the whole family will become Christians. 
and then the whole village, and then the whole tribe. That's how they built the church. Up in the regional area, rural area in the village, 15 families multiplied there by six. They come together, they build a church already. So their experience of God is very particular in their life, very specific because God, through the Holy Spirit, touched them, healed them, uh, released them from bondage. They found that. Broken families, mended, love, reconcil reconciled, and love and you know, blossom among these children, etc. That is the real, uh, reality of the Christians in those underdeveloped countries. But they need us to go in to nurture them so that they can grow spiritually, so that they can build more churches. That's why our board of missions have this sort of mission to all different countries. The M&M &M &M got mission team as well. It's so important in certain places, you need to turn to the physical need first. Then you bring them along the road, along the line to share with them the gospel because they saw, they saw, they see that you are truly a, an angel of God. You are representing God there. And believe me. And on the 17th of February, there's, there's a Sunday service on, on Saturday, okay? Three of us, we have divided our bishop, uh, Reverend James, uh, David Young, and myself. We split into three teams. We have to preach four times that day. And the last church, after they have to wait for four hours for us to arrive because the road is. I don't know how to say. It's all up and down the hills. It's so dangerous. But thank God for his grace and guidance for us. When we reach that church, it's 5 p.m. They waited for three, four hours already. Why they have to wait? Because there's a need there. They want us, the pastors and people, to go there to pray for a 12-month-old baby girl, a 60, 60 years old lady. Because... They know they only come to church, to Christian church. They will get healed. Then we pray. The next day I ask them, any news on this, the mother of this 12 years old and the uh, uh, old sister? They say they are all fever gone, every, the stomach ate, everything gone, subsided. Then we just say, go back to see a doctor, it's more possible. But they take days to go to a clinic. So that's how it is, how serious. And we need to tell them, our God is big. Our God is greater than whoever they have believed in the past. That is the message that we have to go to share the gospel with them. And then use our gifts. You are gifted in musical instrument. You serve in uh, uh, singing inspiration. That's great. Otherwise, you are gift or be gone. I used to enjoy the choir songs and all that in my younger days. But gradually, because of work, because of not enough time, I dropped out. So I lost a gift in singing. I can't sing all songs anymore. Why? Because you didn't practice. We need to continue on to use the gift that God has given you or the talents that God has given you. We need to use different means for evangelism. Like I just started saying, you know, the people listen to you by watching you first. Then once you need to train others. You need to train others to come along to help you to do the ministry together. So from this text here, what I try to tell you is doesn't matter how old you are. You are one God called to be his co-worker to spread the gospel, to share the love. Work in the community, share it with your next door neighbor. In your, wherever your circle is, in the school, uni, etc. you share your life. That's, that is the laity. That is a lay ministry of the church. 
The church does not belong to a pastor or the pastoral team of three or four. The church belongs to all the believers, for those who enter the church to worshiping, to praising. This is our church. We are the people. We are the people. We are here to build up the church. We are here to spread the gospel. We are here to bring the lost to Christ. We are here to support each other, nurturing holy living, personal and corporate life. And we are here to willingly, freely, to kneel down and pray to God. Don't feel shame to, to kneel down and pray. It's not because people look down upon you, oh, you poor thing. But that is good because in your heart, you want to humble yourself before God to pray to God. In the church in uh, Nepal, when you ask them to let's pray together openly, you know how the sounds look like? The sounds like? Like thundering, like heavy rain. In our church, when we say, say, let's all pray together. Some pray loud, some silently pray. But I did not say which one is better. But what I'm saying is, we need to look for the unison in prayer, united in one, so that whatever we pray, God will answer. Because if some of them come here, just have the posture of praying, but no context, I mean, no content, it's no use. It's not pleasing God. As we come to pray to God, we need to truly to pray in unison, to say amen to what others pray, that things will happen, miracles will happen. So we faith and love to care others inside our church, outside our church, in the community, in our workplace. We are able to save up willingly to serve others. Yes, sometimes I wonder, why Christian businessmen suffer so much? Why? Because other people pick on you? Because other people know that you are Christian, therefore they come to put some sort of persecution on you? Suffering on you? Yes, maybe, perhaps. But I tell you one thing. I was thinking like that 10 years ago. Then I decided one thing. I just con if this guy has said not something bad about me, I pray for him first. So all these years, it suddenly some one day I say some name of my client come to my mind. I just pray. Either within the day he will call me. Two days later they will call me. Why? Because I pray for them. I forgive them. I just say fine. You take advantage of me. It's fine. That means I love you, I share, I care for you. Then they come back to me. It's happening even last week and the week before as well. I pray for the people they are associated with, especially in the marketplace. How Christians can live up the Christian living of a life testimony, our good witnesses. That is our challenge. So on this day, on this day, on this Psalm, Palm Sunday 2024, think about something you want to do differently as you, uh, after you, the service, you go out to face the world. So we need to have with passion and urgency for evangelism. Doesn't matter it's on time or in time or not in time. That means in season or not in season, in other words, from the, from the scripture. It is our duty to share the gospel to evangelize, doing our personal evangelism or group evangelism or street evangelism or through uh, gatherings, big gatherings. But our job is called upon to share the gospel, to share the love with others. What can we do? So afterwards, I will share with you our lay ministry for our church this year, what we can do, what you can participate, what we can do. So in conclusion, I would say, the three things that we need to remember. We must have the prayerful and alert life. When we pray, we have to be alert. What we pray, we know what we need for. The second thing is 
having a life with good testimonies. The third thing is have a team with the same vision, the same vision, and particularly the church leaders. We need to work together to come up to become a team with same vision to manage the church, to be a good steward of what God has bestowed upon us as a church. We need to do at the same time how to nurture our congregation, our brothers and sisters, and how to expand the church by bringing more people, by focusing on our evangelism and our mission work. So Lord, help us that on these words I have mentioned, hopefully it will rekindle your heart, remind you what you need to do for this year. There will be something different or something significant in your life. For God, let's pray. Almighty God of Father, we thank you, God Father, for all your scripture. The evidence of your love through your only Son who came, take away our sin by dying on the cross and give us hope because you have risen, are raising up to you, O oh Father. You call us to be church. We are here to expand your kingdom. We are here to enrich your children. We are here to bring more souls to you, oh Father. Help us to examine ourselves at this time. In this year, 2024, what have we done? What have we received from you, O oh Father? The gifts that we have used to the full extent. So, Father, help us as we ponder on this on Palm Sunday. Looking forward to this holy week. Remind us our belief in you, our faith in you, our lifestyle, our attitude, our characters, the work that you call us upon to, so that we can honor you and glorify you through ourselves, through our family, to the church, to the fellowship, to the world of Lord. We thank you, God, for this opportunity that you remind us and also pray, God, oh Father, give us the wisdom and knowledge to make decisions that we ought to make, the things that we ought to do. Lord, we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray all this. Amen. Now we come to a time of uh, offering. Let us bring let us now bring our tithes and offering to the Lord and may our generosity produce in us our thanksgiving to God because of his grace bestowed upon us through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Heavenly Father, we are grateful that you demonstrated your great love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now please accept these tithes and offerings that we bring so that your church can be the channel of blessing and brings the gospel of grace and hope into communities and by which individual lives can be transformed for Jesus. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Peace be upon you. Uh, we also welcome uh, Thomas, uh, our local preacher, our lay leader of CMCA, uh, to be here with us today. And uh, he has been preaching at the two services, the 9 a.m. Chinese service and also the 11 a.m. English service. Uh, we welcome all of you. Uh, so let us welcome each other. Okay, You can wave your hand or share hand with the uh, brothers and sisters next to you. <laughs> okay, Remember that we do have uh, refreshment, okay? So stay back for refreshment and also a time of fellowship. So let us look at some of the announcements within our church. We would like to congratulate Daniel and Leong Ha uh, as their eldest daughter, Sarah, has given birth to a baby girl. And uh, we also thank all fellowship and small group who contribute their time and effort to share their love in baking a total of 1,715 is the cookies or biscuits for the prison fellowship. Okay, we got an out. Uh, yeah, general reminders, okay. Uh, just the door, okay, to the sanctuary. Uh, be uh, careful with that uh, during service particularly because uh, when you open it, uh, you make sure that it is closed properly, okay. Yeah, next one. Uh, Monty Thursday, we do have a Last Supper combined worship service, which is a physical one, uh, at the church annex, 7.30 on this coming Thursday. Okay, Okay. continue on, next one. Uh, Land devotion, uh, we do, uh, we actually send, uh, send it out for the Holy Week. Uh, we also have 15 copies of the printed uh, devotion for you. Uh, you can get one from the Archer's counter. Uh, this is the offering details, the offering figures, please take note. Next one. Uh, just uh, a reminder for these uh, collections of empty containers, uh, particularly the drinks containers. Um, the, the date is uh, 31st of March, okay? That will be next Sunday. So please make sure that you uh, bring all those that you have collected uh, and it is a part of the church recycling program. Next one. Uh, this is a pledge form uh, for every members uh, and also every believers. Uh, it is a time uh, for us to uh, tell it out for uh, you know for our stewardship and finance to do the budget for the church. Uh, we encourage brothers and sisters to uh, pledge and also at the same time uh, you know to. Uh, contribute for the running of the church. Main ministry. <laughs> I was reminded uh, particularly about this one because it is only two weeks away, okay? Uh, we do have a very good speakers, excellent speakers, okay? Because myself, I came from University of New South Wales and I'm very familiar with this uh, navigation group, you see? So this uh, person, Mike Bellani, is actually a very well-known scientist, okay? So uh, I think our EMC chairperson, uh, Michael, has uh, already invited him to come for that day, and it is a very special privilege for him to be here. And the topic is very interesting. Science and cosmology confirm the Bible. In the Bible, they were talking about a lot of uh, things, you know, within our universe. Okay, so it is a time for us to come and look at how a scientist through science and cosmology, you know, confirm the Bible. And today, you can register because we know that online there are not many people register yet. So you can approach Michael straight away to register. 
Okay? We need to register because we need to cater for lunch. Okay? So we need to know how many people will be here. Yeah. So take time. Okay? Very, uh, it is an event not to be missed. Next one. Sunday school, okay, just a reminder to all parents, remember to sign in and also to sign out. It is part of the Safe Church policy as well. Okay, Safe Church Awareness Workshop, we uh, have one, uh, this uh, Safe Church Awareness Workshop for 25th of April, which is an NZAC holiday. Um, and please register online as well, okay? Uh, if you got any queries or uh, you you got any inquiries, please uh, check with me. Good Friday combined service, 10 a.m. Okay, at church, uh, and also the Resurrection Sunday or Easter service that will be 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Okay, worship training conference. Okay, uh, this one you still got time to register. Oh. I think the closing date is on 31st of March. So please, uh, you know, uh, register as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. Invitation to participate in short-term mission to Japan. Okay. Uh, we just received it from the board of mission, I think, just about uh, one week ago. Okay. So uh, the closing date is on the 31st of uh, March. So please, uh, if you like, you can uh, register uh, through the online form. Uh, it is sort of like, you know, visit, visitation and actually getting to know more about Japan. They will be visiting some of the Chinese churches in Japan. Uh, the, I think there are two teams. The first one will be September uh, to Tokyo. Uh, second one to Yoto. That will be March 2025. Okay. So uh, we, we do have it on the uh, this uh, digital bulletin. Okay, so you can read more about it as well. Weekly Bible verse. So let us uh, recite it together. Uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 31. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. Okay. All right, next one. Yeah, EMC Church Camp. I think they are still uh, encouraging people to... Uh, uh, register for it. Michael, do you have the numbers? Yep. <laughs> yes, yes, we have the number. Praise the Lord. Uh, yes, we have uh, 87 uh, um, already signed up. And uh, I think, uh, is Pastor Ellen around here? No, not at the start. Oh, okay. Well, we, we have a present to give to uh, registrant number 81, and that would be Adam Ting. So, Adam, you can uh, come and collect your present from me later. Ah, later, later. The present is uh, in the Sunday school room, so anyway, later. So anyway, congratulations. Okay. All right. Uh, there are still places that you can uh, sign out, okay? Yeah. Please, uh, because it is a very, uh, I think it's a very excellent uh, opportunity for you to enjoy, you know, a community life, uh, Christian communities. Uh, okay, so uh, I will ask uh, our lay leader of CMCA to uh, do some reporting on the lay activities of the CMCA. As you can see, all the churches, they have some core ministries. So as our Methodist church, so these are Christian education, evangelism, missions, Christian social concern, worship and music. All these ministries are for the good for the people <coughs> to attend. That means we believers, we the members to support. See, lay ministry is to get all believers involved in mission, witnessing and services, taking responsibilities of the church, managing God-given resources of time, talent and wealth for church ministry as well as human resources. So these are the basic work for the church. Some of them are the core ministry, some of them are supporting. Money, finance, church administration are the supporting part of this. Next one, we talk about we need to train more leaders, especially the second generation or future church leaders. 
We have one course, um, a joint course with the Esprit Theological Seminary, uh, Theological Semin Seminary in the uh, USA. Unfortunately, at this point, I cannot tell you <coughs> the actual starting dates because we're supposed to do one in June, either later part of June or early July this year, but we are waiting for answer for that. Be beside that, our regular Chinese uh, program, the LAMs, are going on. And praise God, the one we just ended have 32 students uh, enrolled for. And hopefully, other courses, people will continue on to attend. And we aim next year, June 2025, we will have your third graduation exercise. This one we targeted to be in Perth because we have students, more students over there that are about to graduate. Okay. Indeed, this online family discipleship is on again, but this time it's only on one day. The Chinese one is on the 10th of August. The English one is on the 7th of September with the same speakers from last year. Next one is support for missions and the and aims, etc. Et I urge you or encourage you all, go and participate one of these. Then you will really experience the changes in your mind, in the way you see how God loved you and how you should go up and share your love with others. I'm looking forward to go back to uh, Nepal, even though it's uh, almost a uh, 15, 16 hours direct flight from Melbourne to Kathmandu. It's a long, long flight. Okay. This is a good experience. It's my first time in my life. I, you know, I was invited three years in a row to go, but this time finally I make up the time to go. Next one is about the safe church. Just now, your uh, Reverend uh, James Kong had mentioned that we have more. Uh, another workshop coming up because of the churches in Melbourne. We have new volunteers, new workers. They need to attend the awareness uh, workshop first. Because 1st of January 2023, it started already. All should be at attend the course first, awareness section first, before they take on their duty. So we try to catch up this year. For those you are here, uh, you are willing to serve, and we want to give you the safe environment to serve. But provide you or this uh, opportunity to attend this workshop. Then you got a certificate to prove that you are at least aware of what are the things uh, about this safe church quali uh, guidelines, uh, policies, and procedures. Number six is the very important one for this year. We got three items coming up this year. 23rd annual section of the annual conference from 28th of November to 1st of December will be here in Melbourne at the Food Chill com uh, Conference Center. And we also celebrate the 30th anniversary of the founding of a church in our, in a founding of the Methodist Church, Chinese Methodist Church in Australia on the 30th of November. Then we have this uh, annual conference, uh, Women Fellowship and Adult Fellowship Camp from the 1st to the 3rd of December with a very good speaker, David Dung. He's a Reverend Dr. David Dung. He's a Secretary General of the COVID, CCOWE, okay? Now, what is this all about? 30th anniversary, we try to give thanks to God for, the, for these 30 years. And we also need to plan our next, looking forward, what are we going to do? The ch with the challenges, with the, uh, if we don't plan ahead, we will lose our vision, we lost our direction. So during this uh, 30th afternoon, after, after 2.30, or three o'clock, there will be a the dialogue. We have invited the uh, uh, church leaders of the WFCMC. We have, we have the two leaders from, from uh, Nepal will be here. And we have the National Council of Churches. Some of the leaders will be here. 
and some of the Christian parliamentarians will be here to have a dialogue. How can we get good scholars from overseas to Australia to train us without having visa issue? That is a big question that we have at this moment. It's very hard to solve, but if we have the dialogue and make the un understanding to be signed or something, whatsoever it is, we will do it so that we will build up the church for the next 30 years that we need to. During this 30th anniversary, of course, we have this uh, uh, souvenir magazine. In the magazine, we allow each local church, if you have uh, both Chinese and English uh, congregations, five A4 sites with some photos of your particular special programs only. For example, your church here, the prison fellowship, that's good, that's special. Because all the other activities across the churches are the same. And during your anniversary, you have published so many times already. But this one, we want it to be different. And we want Christian brothers and sisters who are professionals. You want to put a listing in there, we'll allow that. So that when people, let's say you are a lawyer, somebody from over an interstate, they come here, I need to look for your lawyer from our church. They'll look up the magazine, they say, oh, I can talk to so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. More like the uh, yellow page listing in our magazine for Christian brothers and sisters. And of course, we welcome brothers and sisters to put an ad in the newspaper. So the, the cause uh, is listed here. It's uh, in the page, is a for site, $2,000 for the whole page. Yes, we have half page, a quarter page, etc. Talk to me if you uh, want to. The next thing, thing is we're talking about not enough pastors. We need to raise some more. So we, our aim is to raise $50,000 to be uh, for this uh, theological education through LAM or through annual conference that we can subsidize the students, you know, so that they have more peace of mind to study, to be qualified, to be our past next generation pastors, all right? So help us to make this a reality and participate by your givings, by your support, by putting ads, etc., in the newspaper. And next is the, th the prayers that we needed. Three events are at one venue, so that these three will be done to glorify our Lord, not to glorify CMC uh, leaders. All right, to glorify our Lord and pray that CMC will be the beacon of hope and love in Australia. All right, and also pray for the hosting church. AC will be hosted by Preston Methodist Church, and then the camp will be the Monash, and all the other few churches in Melbourne will come together to do the 30th anniversary celebration together. So come, so that we will truly to glorify God. And next one is the financial resources we needed to accomplish all this. So the, the cost of the dinner ticket will let you know afterwards, all right? See, the fourth one is where we go from here. We celebrate 30th anniversary. What are we going to do? What strategy decision we need to have so that we can grow our church to glorify God, to honor God? And next one is as we're living in a very challenging age, coupled with an external restrictive environment, I'm talking about safe church, we ought to be vigilant in God's word, be sensitive to God's spirit and pray constantly and support our AC or DC financially as well. The last one is, number nine is for you to pray for yourself, your prayer, so that yourself to grow and to make sure in Christian, spir uh, Christian spirituality for serving and asking, asking for opportunity to serve by your church. You don't have to wait until pastor. You say, I'm, really, I'm willing to serve. What can I do? Talk to your pastoral team pastors and all that. All right, so please keep us in prayers. These are the pr four prayers items for you and the others for the annual conference that we need to move on. I thank you, uh, Reverend James Kong and uh, the LCEC here, that every year at least I can come to visit you once on this uh, Laity Sunday to see you all. Indeed, it's very good to see you. Thank you.
Thank you, LP uh, Thomas. So we have the chorus of response now. Some God, you're so good. Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy that bought with love wholeheartedly my soul undeserving God you're so good oh God you're so good God you're so good you're so pray. Heavenly Father, we continue to uh, give thanks to you, and Heavenly Father, may our life continue to live for the glory of God. Heavenly Father, we pray for brothers and sisters. We pray for those who are weak. We pray the Lord, you will continue to strengthen them. And Heavenly Father, continue to be the comfort in our life, so that Heavenly Father, whatever things that we go through, we know that God, you are here with us. And Heavenly Father, we also ask you to uh, heal those who are sick. We pray the Lord, they will continue to feel the mighty healing of God. And Heavenly Father, may you continue to let us to uh, receive all your abundant blessing and mercy. Lord, that we will continue to experience your grace each day as we come to you, Lord. We will continue to experience your strengthening. And also at the same time, Heavenly Father, let our songs continue to sing of your glory, sing of your mighty words in us. And Heavenly Father, we pray that the scriptures that we read will continue to affirm our faith in Christ. And Heavenly Father, let our life continue to be the light to the world so that we can share the love of God with other people. May the love of God be the patient in your heart. May the joy of God your strength when times are hard. May the presence of God a peace that overflows in your heart. May the word of God the seed that you might sow. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs> Seated. 
Let us give thanks for the refreshment that we are going to receive. Heavenly Father, we continue to give you thanks. We thank you for brothers and sisters who prepared a refreshment for us. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for their love to our brothers and sisters. May you continue to bless it to us so that Heavenly Father, we can continue to have a very blessed time of fellowship together so that at the same time, we can share our love and also care for our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week. Remember, make a friend, be a friend, win a friend for Christ.